Welcome back, this is Mike from Digital Offensive and you're watching my path to GX Pen. What is the GX Pen? The GX Pen is Sands Institute's uh, 660 class, which is one step up from the 550 class, but the actual name of the class is Advanced Pen Testing and Exploit Writing. I originally decided to take this class not only um, for my job because it's kind of what I'm doing at my job, doing network pen testing, application testing, and trying to come up with exploits around it, but also because I thought it would be a great value added for the OCP. Unfortunately, it didn't really tie much into the OCP. Uh, the OCP is like down here and the GX Pen's like up here. Uh, a lot of people I found out kind of refer to the GX Pen close to like the OSCE where you're actually writing your own uh, exploits and finding the buffer overflows and bypassing a lot of these advanced techniques. So let me tell you a little bit about where I'm at right now. Uh, I really really started the path back in February uh, at the same time as doing my OCP. So I really didn't do any videos on this and really didn't focus too much on um, the actual preparation other than going through the class and doing the work that I needed to do. So back in February, I went out to New Orleans <clears throat> for a week long boot camp. Now most SANS boot camps are eight hours a day. Uh, you go in in the morning, you get out a reasonable time, and you're done. The GX Pen class is actually a 10 hour day. You're basically getting out of the class around seven o'clock at night, some nights, if not later, depending if you're doing the boot camp, if you're staying, uh, staying around to do additional work and so on. So it's a lot of work to cover in that short amount of time. Uh, basically you get five books. Uh, basically each book covers the day of the class and each book is 300 plus pages uh, big. And then you basically cram all that material into that 10 hour day where you have an instructor telling you everything about it. Now days one and two weren't so bad. Uh, basically that was where we were talking about network pen testing, uh, bypassing Kafka portals, attacking OSP routing and other routing protocols, and other network based attacks. Very informative, a lot of stuff I have had experience with in the past, so it made it much easier for me to grasp the concepts and move forward through that material. Day three comes. Um, this is a section I've been looking at, uh, looking forward to personally for a while. And that's because it was basically uh, taking through Python programming and Scappy and some other tools that I have had a lot of interest in and I've only dabbled in on my own time as time permitted. So basically I have a day dedicated to this. I was extremely excited for and uh, I looked forward to. Uh, day three went through pretty well, uh, learning Python, doing Scapy, uh, using those attacks um, that we built within the uh, class against the boot camps. Awesome day. Day four was another day I was kind of looking forward to getting into the buffer overflows. Now coming from the OCP, I was like, all right, I got a great, uh, great foundation. I have a good understanding how this works and I think I'll be able to get through this pretty fast. I was wrong. Um, Doing buffer overflows in Linux definitely threw me way off. I was so used to finding the exact EIP, the exact offset, that my brain just wasn't uh, grasping the concepts he was going over of just randomly choosing that address within the range that was valid. Uh, it wasn't until later reading the book that it finally snapped. I was like, okay, I, I get why that works. And I will share videos on that down the road as time permits. But um, it, it definitely was a stumbling block uh, getting through the Linux buffer overflows and eventually moving forward to the Windows side. So day four was all Linux based buffer overflows bypassing uh, from basic buffer overflows all the way through stack canaries. Uh, going through how to move your um, step through the canary basically to exploit the buffer and then also rebuild the canary uh, so you can get around those uh, protections. Great. Definitely mind numbing by the end of the day. Uh, a lot of assembly, a lot of other things that I was not used to. Uh, day five, uh, I was kind of excited once again, thinking, hey, I got definitely a lot of Windows uh, buffer overflow experience. The first buffer flow we were doing was almost identical to the lab uh, for the OCP, and I was pretty excited. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is going to be a piece of cake. I'm going to be able to get through this pretty fast and then have some extra time to focus on the next advanced section to basically jump ahead and do some reading. Once again, I was wrong. Um, we started the class and things weren't working out properly. Uh, it definitely took a side step from what I was used to. And it was a learning experience. Basically, you're always learning. Uh, you can't just assume you know everything um, because once you assume you know everything, that's where you're gonna fail and fall behind. So I went through the material a couple of times, grasped the concepts, made it through, had some extra time to uh, focus on the next section. 
and start understanding that before the uh, next part of the class started. Now, with that next section, we were talking about ROP, uh, ROP chains and uh, uh, basically how to bypass ROP chains within Windows and things like that. And that was another really mind-blowing section. Uh, I think we took a good two, three hours over the day to get through ROP chains. But the ROP chain section was definitely a bit hard. So where am I at now? Let's jump ahead a few months. So my exam is scheduled June 14th. I started to go through my material about a month ago to start refreshing my memory and start putting the dog, uh, the little tags on the pages and to start creating my index. So I've got through books one through three. Uh, I got them all tagged out. I need to type them up. Um, I'm on book four right now, which as I just said is the Linux buffer overflow section. And I'm going through that material and thinking about 30 pages in. My goal here is to wrap up book three I'm sorry, book four, and then book five uh, within the next two weeks. Um, so by next Friday, I want to be done with all my books. And basically dog tagged and uh, written up into a index uh, for the exam. Then I want to take my first practice exam and see where I'm at. Based on that first practice exam, I'm going to uh, refocus of areas I need to go back and study. And then uh, once I do that, I'm going to go take my second practice exam. Um, hopefully give me enough time to see if I have improved and to make a decision where I need to go from there. Now, un unlike the OSCP, <laughs> the GX Pen is pretty costly if you don't pass the first time and it's also costly if you want to get an extension. Uh, extensions cost for 45 days is like $395. If you fail the exam, it's $795 to retake the exam. So it's not like the OSCP where it's $60 a pop. Um, once my GX pen is done, uh, hopefully it passed the first time and I don't have to worry about taking this again. Um, and I think I will. I, I'm, I'm pretty certain I will. Uh, this is the first time I gotta say that I have taken a SANS class where I am worried about passing. And the reason for that is the books in this exam really reminded me a lot from the OCP. It, it really had that try harder attitude. Uh, the material in the books were pretty high level and as you read through it, they were cramming a lot of information into small little paragraphs. So if no one's ever seen a SANS book before, the top section is usually a bullet point and PowerPoint presentation. The bottom section is usually more detailed notes. So think of like a slide deck you create for work or for school. You have your nice pretty slide deck that has a couple of bullet points. Below is your little note section that you read from. That's kind of what the SANS material is set up as. Now, when you're explaining these advanced topics, in like three, four lines of notes, it kind of gets lost at times. So I found a lot of times I was going out and doing additional studying. Uh, one of the things I have done is I've been looking at the art of uh, the art of assembly, uh, second edition. It's a book you can find over in No Starch, and that's been helping a little bit around the assembly language. But it's the first time I've seen Sans book not really, in my opinion, uh, go through the process of here's your topic. Here's the content, here's why, here's how, and here's the summary. I, I kind of feel that's kind of lost in the GX Pen book. Um, I did the GCIH the, and the GMOM, and it was really easy flow. You can easily tag each section of the book to say, here's your exploit, here's your reason why you do it, here's your defenses against it, and here's the remediation. You can go right through and quickly understand the whole concept and tie it together that way. Where I feel with the GX Pen, it's a little bit harder to do. Um, not saying it's not good material, just saying it's definitely out of the norm. And from what I've seen now too, is a lot of the SANS classes are now moving to a more hands-on approach. So you'll have a certain amount of questions within your exam, that'll be five to 10 questions where that actually be hands-on simulator and not just multiple choice questions. So that's the reason why I'm a little worried about the exam this time is just the, the material, the understanding of the material and the new formats is kind of out of my norm. Um, but change is good, right? So we'll move forward from there. Now I know you guys don't always like these videos where I just hear and talk to you guys. I apologize for that. Hopefully once the GX Pen is done, I'll have more time to get out better videos. I have been trying to get some Hack the Box videos done. Uh, I've been traveling the last few weeks, so it's kind of like, do I release them three days after the box retired or do I just skip the release and wait to the next video? Let me know what you guys think below in the comments. 
able on one of my trips to actually get a video uploaded while I was out, which was kind of amazing. I just happened to notice I had single at that moment in time. I was like, quick, let me upload this uh, to get it out there to you guys. But uh, hopefully after the GX Pen, things will settle down a little bit. I'll have more time to get some more technical videos out to you guys. I definitely got a lot of your, um, a lot of your votes around uh, a new series around exploits, and I definitely want to get that series going. Um, it's a matter of getting some lab set up, getting some things uh, set up to do filming and things like that. So give me some time. I will come back to that. I will get those videos up. Other than that, make sure you like these videos, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so uh, so far. If you have any questions, comments, reach out to me on social media, Twitter, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn. I won't befriend you on Facebook. Sorry, I keep that locked down to friends and family only. However, if you do message me on Facebook, I will message you back. It may take me a little time to realize it, that you did send me a message, but I will reach out to you. Uh, if you are on the OSP study group, uh, feel free to tag me in a post. I will reach out to you. Uh, once again, thank you guys all. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a good day.